Elmer, we're doing Elmer Fudd this whole hour. That's our that's our lesser known people. He was uh, Elmer Fudd was actually a taxidermy. And no one knows that. Oh, wow. He was a he was a taxidermist. That's why he was hunting all the time. That's why he was hunting. He was hunting a six foot rabbit. Six foot rabbit. Could you imagine having a stuffed six foot rabbit in your living room? Come on. I'd be terrified. I'd want it. Yeah. Stare that mucker, motherfucker down every day like, who's funny now, bitch? Yeah. yeah. With a gun that would shoot in circles, it made no sense. So. Yeah, it was questionable that Elmer Fudd hunted with a blunderbust, which is a joke I made earlier tonight about my own penis. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, wow. Call out your own previous... Uh, respect to that joke. Yeah. He's, he's, it's a call. It's a callback to a joke that I made that none of you heard. Yeah, that you made privately by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you can if you can reference if you can reference a previous joke and your penis at the same time, all for it. All for it. Yeah, you're in great shape. Yeah, yeah. it covered it covered all my checkpoints. Oh, penis callbacks all in one joke. Yeah. <laughs> we go into every podcast we go in with an agenda. It's just reference my penis 5 times at least. <laughs> yeah. It's just on a notepad like sitting in sitting in the wall above me like all right penis 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 penis, 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 okay, penis, I penis, him. penis if you're penis. if you're listening to the LKP podcast through and through you know exactly what my dick looks like oh that makes me uncomfortable and i have known you for 30 Three long years. Just so we're clear, KY definitely knows what my dick looks like. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. Honestly, I was never once like, all right. It was a little more like, <laughs> uh, okay. Again. All of all of my exes would say the same thing. Yeah. It's like, Man, I bet I, I'm going to start a support group for the exes. It's just going to be, I'm the only male, but it's like, all right, ladies, <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> I think we've we've done enough for a jokey intro. Do we have a a regular intro? Con man, you're up tonight, man. What's up? Yeah, man. I'm thinking about just jumping yeah. into it. I'm going to jump into the guy, and then we can do the intros after that. Yeah, dude. Sure, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Change it up. Change it Let's up. Let's get nasty. I love he this. He had to tuck away <laughs> his Cherry Coke Zero. <laughs> All right. This is a quote from the London Daily Mail from 1919. Colonel Fritz Duquesne. A fugitive from justice is wanted by His Majesty's government for trial on the following charges. Murder on the high seas, the sinking and burning of British ships, the burning of military stores, warehouses, and coaling stations, conspiracy, and the falsifications of admiralty documents. He carried on hostile operations against the British government in various parts of the world under the following names. Fred, Fredericks, Captain Claude Staunton, Colonel Bezin, Von Richtofen, Pied Nassin, his correct name is Fritz Jobert Marquis Duquesne. Prior to the war, he was known as Captain Fritz Duquesne, a big game hunter, author, explorer, and lecturer. Holy oh my shit. Wow. What the fuck? How do you guys feel about that one? <laughs> my favorite one is Fred. Fucking Fred. Yeah, Fred. Known on the high seas for murdering people. Fucking Fred. Has Fred. A, Fred has a nice ring to it, and it's, uh, it's not nearly as, as long. So. I feel like his 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 real name is worse than all of his made up names. Yeah, a little bit. I feel like that's usually how it goes. Yeah, it's like I could be I could be Fritz Duquesne or I could be Sexy Fred. Ooh. Yeah, I'm too sexy for my shirt, Fred, out here. So right, said Fred right. all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Well, it sounds like you got a fucking banger in store for night. Oh yeah, uh, and we've got we've got we're at full strength tonight. We've got the whole gang here. We've got Voltron. All five of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I did not see that one coming. That was nice. <laughs> All the cats, baby. So with us, we have the most beautiful, the most handsome, Big Cat. How you doing tonight? I'm loving. I'm dreaming. We're out here, ready to go. Talk about Fred, baby. Mm-hmm. Mm, much love. Looking, uh, the most handsome person is... is Con man, the man who's presenting, but uh, I'll take a a very far second. Yeah. We also have the most talented, looking good with the beard, KY Jelly, gelling it up as he usually does. Whoa, whoa. Ooh, baby, I'm out here. I'm feeling viscous. I'm I'm ready to slide people into places and just let the love in. And I I will also take my my position as a distant. I say I've been distant fourth. No, in, in the good no, looking no, no way, oh, yeah. no, 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 yeah. no, 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 easily. Mm-hmm. No, well, Sean, I mean, there's five of us. There's, Who's the fifth? 
Oh, you are, baby. Oh, Dave Dave Meyers. Meyers. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're all tied for second. We're tied for a distant second. Oh, I wish you knew there these was, things. Honestly, I will agree with Ryan at the outset. I think we all tie for second. Connor, he just has a bone structure. It's just that's it's factual. true. But it's true. That, that's true. That's true. We are, we're a strong second. All of us a strong second. Strong second, but far second, far second, but a strong second. Far strong, exactly. Strong and far. Also with us tonight, the hilarious, the always whimsical, Sean. How you doing tonight, baby? I'm doing all right. I'm doing just fine. I think we're uh, we're gonna come in here and get a little bit of music making. You know, sweet mm. loving music. Yeah, we got to share the love, Fred. baby. Yeah, along yeah with Sean's Fred. stoned out of his mind right now, <laughs> just so we're clear. Hey, hey, I always have good nights. I don't know what to tell you. He's on his hat. Yeah, he's 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 living. He's living right now. Yeah, but Sean being super high is like everyone else being a zero. That's just... That's true, yeah. I That's walk through a force. fog every day. What do you want from me? <laughs> and last but not least, we've got J-Man. I want I want to get your your opinion on that intro because I know it speaks to you. Oh my god! I so I I feel like we're going to talk about a pirate or some type of 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 ne'er do well in the high seas. I'm all about this topic. I love it. I'm sitting here in my house. Sean is the magic carpet ride is actually the next room over for me. We have a I have a guest in my background, a very high. Terry, one of our buddies, he's a big, he's a good friend of the LKP uh, po- the Terry. Of people podcast. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. big T, T Bone. I've got small Kevin here taking a nap. My dog doing a little bit of uh, sleep growling at the moment, mm. but <laughs> sleep sleep growling is my favorite. That is my favorite. Yeah. yeah, I have I have slept next to Ryan in 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 plutonic nature, and he sleep growls, and it's it's very cute. Plutonic, it's very cute. Plutonic. <laughs> Well, for the for the listeners, they can't see me winking, but both my eyes are having fun. definitely a lot of winking when he says plutonic, guys. Don't you don't you doubt it? But no, for real, it was a lion's den. It was loud. There's a I'm a loud sleeper. A lot of lot of noises coming out of there. Yeah, yeah. I uh, Connor, I'm not gonna lie to you. I am really excited to have you cover a criminal. I, we haven't talked about uh, a true criminal in a little bit, so I'm really pumped. Yeah, I mean, he's he's part criminal, part. Freedom fighter, part con man. It's all very interesting, and I was little. I was a little worried when I first started researching this because this is just so straight up J Man's alley. Like I was worried that he had like he had like known about this guy or he'd been like working on this one, and like we'd overlap. <laughs> I think we all know that we're always worried that J Man has probably already seen this person and is uh, potentially going to present them at some point. Yes. Yeah. No, I'm 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 super curious that this guy has. I mean, I wouldn't call myself a freedom fighter. Certainly a criminal. But no, uh, <laughs> no, that is not true. That is not true. No, He's joking. No, no, He's no, no, there's no. more winks there. There's more winks there. Yeah, lots, much like Kyle winks. was winking about us sleeping together. When, I when, and when I said platonic, I meant uh, intercourse. It was intercourse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't actually mean to say that one. Anytime he, you he describe a plutonic way. friend, if you have to say plutonic, it means you have slept together. It means That's you really, wore them like a glove. Yeah. You know? Exactly. You were deep inside of them. Yes. Well, you have one guy is named KY Jelly. The other guy's name is Big Cat. You're pretty much setting up like a great. Pornhub scenario for oh gay butt sex. no question yeah that's a that's a that's minimum uh, ten searches a day on Pornhub right yeah. there yeah <laughs> well you know if this podcast falls through we've got a good plan B yeah we yeah do. we do I am, I am the I I will I don't brag about much physically but I am a power bottom and I will snatch mm. those knees baby mm. I'll get them <laughs> and he knows I have I have very I have very I have chicken legs so it's easy very snatchable snatchable it's the upper half that has most of the power yeah. I've got I've got long arms. I can reach right back there. All support. It's all love mm-hmm. from top and bottom, mm-hmm. baby. Mm-hmm. Bottom down, chicken legs, nothing there. It's a it's a basically you're watching bird porn. Top half he enjoys it. <laughs> top half he enjoys it. <laughs> I will say um, to to Justin's point, to, to Connor's concern, we're all worried that we're going to end up covering folks that other people have kind of looked at and looked into. It was right. So for our listeners, if you guys want to submit people that you think we should be talking about, hit us up at the LKP, hit us up at social media, hit us up on our website, listenerpeoplepodcast.com. We're always available. We want to hear from you bitches. Yes, please. Speak to me. Hit us up, guys. Love you. We're on we're on all social media. We're masters of the internet. Let us know. What do you wanna what do you wanna hear? 
Is there someone you want us to talk about? If if you guys ever hit us up on our Facebook page, our Twitter account, uh, Lesson on People Facebook page, Lesson on People podcast, your Twitter account, Lesson on People podcast, our Facebook page, hit us up. If you have an idea for something that you want us to cover, we will absolutely do it, and we will give you a shout-out in our episodes. Wow, so way to do the plug I just did, but better, so that's, like, super offensive. He mentioned all the sites, KY, you you missed a few of them, but you were, that was great, you were great, that was great, that was great. So I'm, I'm bad at my job, this is a reflection moment for me, so thank you so much. Wow, the funny part is that KY is just gonna edit that part out later, it's fine. (laughs) Someone has all the power. It's okay. <laughs> Our listeners know. They already know. What I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the, my plug in, edit out Justin's plug, and then still keep me bitching about Justin's plug because <laughs> right. I love good, to hear myself good, speak. Good, there good, we good. go. Anyway, Connor, my man. So we're talking about Fritz Duquesne. Um, this was a man. He's born in 1877 in well modern day South Africa. There's not a whole lot about his his early life. There's a couple of tidbits. I mean, we're we're just gonna jump right into it. He killed his first man when he was twelve. Sick. He was a he was a boar, which is if if you're not familiar with it, is a you know they were settlers in South Africa, mostly Dutch speaking. You know they're they're basically colonists that are ruled by the British during this time. The family had a like a general store in part of their house, and this. Customer comes in from like a nearby Zulu camp, he begins arguing with his mother, who was tending the store at the time. They got into some sort of an argument over prices or something like that. It got into a physical altercation, and he ends up taking the man's spear from him and stabs him in the stomach. Okay. I'm about this dude. This guy like, speaks to my soul. 12 years old, that's like getting killed by your paper boy. Mm-hmm. I mean... Mm-hmm. Yeah. You didn't tip him. Son you didn't give bitch. him that quarter he was expecting every month. This guy was expecting a quarter with his red wagon. You, he didn't get it, and now he is shanking you. You're dead. And he stole your Zulu spear and stabbed yeah. you with it. Jeez. Wow. So hardcore from the fucking outset. What a jerk. Right. I mean, and there's also an incident like shortly after this where the like a nearby tribe which like attacks their village. And so they they get word of the impending attack. They to retreat to like a nearby river in their like ox drawn covered wagons. The attack force catches up to them on the road and they circle the wagons like straight Oregon trail style and they fight him off. And he's, he's with the defense force shooting most of these people that are attacking them. As it, as it, as a, ch- as a child, he's shooting most of these. People? Yeah. He's still 12 years old. That's crazy. Out there with your with your Fisher Price shotgun, killing people. <laughs> <laughs> what so, was the What was the BB gun for the Christmas story? Got the Red Rider. God, geez. yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's what he had. And so he was, in fact, shooting their eyes out. He was shooting their eyes out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I mean, like, seriously though, this kid had. Please, honestly, Justin, correct me if I'm wrong here. This guy had fucking bodies on his jacket at 12 years old. Bodies on the jacket? Is, is it bodies on the jacket? Is that is that a term? Is that any sort of term? I don't know. I've never Am I making it up? Have I just made up? Yeah, you just made, made something up. He made it up. Yeah. Fuck okay, it, man. so edit this whole thing jacket. out. Let's just start and say bodies from the jacket, and then we'll just all go along with it, and that's how we start a trend. I think that works. And that, now it's a trend. Now it's a trend. So let's just try okay. this. KY, you said bodies from the jacket. That's correct. Bo- yeah, he's he, he's got bodies on his jacket. It's fucking twelve balls haven't dropped, and he's he's killed fifty men already. Wow, we'll go with so many bodies on the jacket. Confirmed kills. Confirmed kills. Wow, incredible, incredible. All right, so he's he's in South Africa during this time, and during like the turn of the century, there's the Boer War, the Second Boer War that happens. For those that aren't familiar with it, it's between the British and the two independent Boer states that uh, are in modern-day South Africa. And really, the cause of the war was there was discovery of gold and diamond deposits in the area. So the British were like, hey, you got some cool stuff over there. (laughs) (laughs) It sounds completely British. (laughs) I want that cool stuff. The British would never, ever... They're too polite. Yeah, they would never, they would never, and, you know, they never engaged in imperialism of any kind. No, yeah. no, no, not, not no, way. no way. It's totally fictional, yeah. 
So, uh, Connor, a little bit of clarity. The the Boers originally were a settlement of you said it before, but I missed yeah, it. Yeah, they're they're Dutch speaking people that settled the area in like the 1600s. So they've been there a long time, but okay. All yeah, right. and then the British decided, hey, you got some cool stuff. We're gonna take it over because imperialism yeah we love we want your shiny shit and we want it the now, queen needs so. more crown jewels rooted that way now i mean they for a while they did have a dialect of dutch and then they've also had like afrikaner which sounds similar to dutch so Afri- afrikaans Afri- oh i'm yeah, sorry Afrikan- yeah. that whole region is very um like what how do they what do they say like dialectic or whatever yeah. where it's like a mix of it's like three, four different things yeah. from different colonies. There's like a French component as well. Yeah. I was actually, I was in the Marine Corps with a kid who was Afrikaans. So that's, uh, the, the Afrikaans are kind of a mix of white and black folks from South Africa. And it's like a, their own ethnic group and it's an own, their own language. So like kind of the, the poor white folks that live in South Africa exist within this i mean it, it's probably more complicated than what i'm explaining it exists within this afrikaans ethnic group and they have their own language so he he did he was a fluent speaker of afrikaans right and this is definitely like the like the proto afrikaans you know these were just like the original settlements that happened during this time so i mean it's it's 1899 and the war like formally kicks off and he fights on the boer side being one of these like native colonists the the boers find some initial success mostly due to the british being like underprepared and overconfident as they usually are oh no that can't possibly no, there's be no true. way there's no way i've never heard of that in history wow god i'm get, i'm out here getting a patriotic education it's what we what we teach in america now so i wouldn't know i wouldn't know yeah <laughs> So, I mean, the, the the Boers win, like, a few key battles. They capture a couple of cities. But then the Empire strikes back, and the British <laughs> land. <laughs> they land 400,000 troops into the area, Jeez. and they basically just take everything over. They seize control, and they're like, we're not fucking around anymore. This is This is ours. There's too much gold here. There's too much diamonds. We got to get this shit. I can't, we can't imagine, none of us, everyone's uh, jaw is dropped at the British doing such a, doing such a thing. I yeah. think they would never That's normally do. Really surprising. Different, really you know. surprising. How, do we know, like, how big was, like, the, the, the Boer force? Was it, like, 20,000 people? Was it? I mean, they were probably at, like, 100,000 between, like, them, like, the Native Africans and, like, their alliance that they had. But they were supremely outnumbered. Right, so the British were like, oh, we see how many people you got. Yeah, we'll, we will literally just ship in more people because that's what we fucking do. Okay, gotcha. So, I mean, from that point on, the, the Boers resort to, like, a more guerrilla warfare tactic. We're just like... As you do against the British, I would say. We can't fight you in, like, a one-on-one land battle. We're just going to do whatever we can to try and preserve our independence. Yeah. Yeah. Connor, Connor, what what year was this going on? This is 1899. Thank you. I needed that for my summation at the end. I wanted to get an idea of like how they were fighting, like what, like what grounds they were fighting, like what like what weapon systems and stuff like that they were using. It was ray blasters. It was mostly ray blasters. They were yeah. using um, lots of lots of blunder. A lot of heat on. beams. Uh, they were using that big gun. I don't know if you guys saw Independence Day. Independence the microwave Day. gun. Yeah, the microwave. They were using that. And, and the star dropper, the star dropper bomb, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then a couple of the mechs, I've been watching some animes, they were using those as well. Oh, yeah, the French made those, right? The French, the French made did, those. The French did make those. They were yep. known as the French mechs. You're exactly yep. right. They were mechs with a, with a nice little beret. <laughs> <laughs> Just constantly smoking a cigarette. Just constantly, yeah. Jacques Bleu, oh my god. <laughs> like, oh, I think that mech has engine failure. They're like, no, 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 it's smoking it's, a cigarette. It's so smoking just keep shooting at it. It's actually getting stronger the more it smokes, so just shoot it harder. Stronger and more prestigious the more it smokes, so. <laughs> um, so in response to this uh, guerrilla warfare that the Boers do, uh, one of the British commanders, his name is General Lord Kitchener, and he's important. He comes back into play later. 
Sounds like a dick. <laughs> he he <laughs> institutes a scorched earth policy. Exactly what a dick would do. Yeah. Destroying all the boar farms, their livestock, and putting all the settlers into concentration camps. My god. Really fair stuff. Easy to do. People like it. Mm -hmm. Goes over well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The Brits the Brits really knew how to wage war at the time, I think. Yeah. Like, oh, we know what to do. Let's just annihilate. The word is annihilate. Just everything they to, are. To uh, Jay Money's point, uh, you don't get into the business of imperialism if you don't know how to kill people. I mean, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> let's be fair here. <laughs> no, I think the queen has that tattooed on her neck. Is that, that's what that is. Yeah. <laughs> kill and thrill. That's what she has tattooed on her neck. <laughs> And then the other side is just a picture of her favorite corgi. <laughs> exactly. And this is Lemmy. And this is Lemmy. He's a doll. <laughs> oh, the queen, if you're listening, which you're not. <laughs> 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 we're just making jokes. We're making yeah. we're making jokes about you. Lighten up, sweetheart. Lighten up, okay? It's okay. It's gonna be good. Yeah, so so Fritz in eighteen ninety nine, he would have been like twenty one or twenty two. But he, he joins the fight on the Boer side as a lieutenant. During one of these early battles that they see some success in, uh, he gets wounded in the shoulder. He catches the bullet. He has to recover, but during that time, he's promoted to captain, and he's just kind of trying to like recover from his wounds and like taking a little bit of time off. When that's happening, while he's recovering, the British are actually like closing in. They landed all those troops, and they start taking cities. So what happens is the president of one of these states says, oh, we have all this gold in our central bank. We need to get it out of here, and we need to send it to the Netherlands for safekeeping. Because the British want their nasty small cocks on all this gold, so take the gold away, all right? I do okay. say so. I want my nasty small cock all over <laughs> your gold. Do it, do it like a Cockney, a Cockney accent. See, all right, Gav, now give us your go. <laughs> I'd love to have my cock all over this go, eh? Come here, sis, show me your cock. Show me your cock. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, that's the one accent we can all agree on. We can, we can all agree, yeah. So old, old Fritzy here, uh, he's actually in command of one of these shipments. But the gold never makes it to its final destination. Interesting. Sick. Curious. Interesting. Very Sick. curious. Interesting. So the story goes, they're they're moving the gold by wagon through Portuguese East Africa, which is now Mozambique. They're just trying to move it through neutral territory, get it to a port, and to ship it out. While they're in the process of shipping it, a quote-unquote disagreement breaks out. And it, it doesn't say how many men they started out with. But at the end of this kerfluffle, there's him, there's two wounded Boer soldiers, and then there's, like, their native guides. And that's all that's left. <laughs> so seemingly they started out with, let's just use the term, lots more guys yes. before this. Oh my god. Wow, so it's him, two wounded guys, and their their native guides. Yeah, like their Sherpas, basically. So he... He orders the natives to hide the gold in the nearby caves, kill the wounded Boer soldiers, and burn the wagons. He then he gives the natives all of the oxen, except for one, and then he rides off on the lone ox. What the fuck? <laughs> With no gold, though. It's all hidden in the caves, so he's just riding off into the sunset on an ox. Yeah, and apparently that gold is still there, somewhere. We've got a treasure hunt ahead of us, gentlemen. All right, Mozambique, pack your bags, boys. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a little bit of a legend, but they have found some gold in some caves in that area. Do they find his? Do they find that? Is it like all claimed now? I, it's not all claimed. So this is one of those things where it's like, it might be true. Okay, so it, there was no definitive answer then on where, where these items landed. Yeah, I mean, and, it's and... also like, 1899, like, yeah. Anything you say basically happens and gets recorded in history. Yeah, you could go about robbing anything and it was word of mouth. Yeah, killing your own injured, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. It's it's mm -hmm. that year. That's the year. That was the year. That was the year of killing. Definitely. Yeah. 
<laughs> no question. Yeah. Like, you know what, 1899, in, in the year 900, in the year 900, never fucking mind, Jesus Christ. In the year 900, also a year of killing. But when we hit 1900, <laughs> as my friend KY was trying to say, we can't do it anymore. There's no more killing after that. There's no exactly. more killing. Thank you, Ryan, for picking that up. Appreciate it. I'm just filling in where you <laughs> left off, you know. Did they, Connor, I do have a question. Um, How much, like, did they say how much gold it was, like, like by volume? What Like, was it like... 20 bricks of gold or was it like 200 bricks well they of gold said or, or like in in total what they were trying to ship was like 1.5 million in like worth of like that day's money of gold okay but i don't know wow, like how okay. large that shipment was but like in total right, so, right. okay that always confuses me because that's that's currency but that's not necessarily like an actual anatomic measurement Right, right. Quantifiable like weight or dimension of gold. One one point five million of anything, I would kill some people for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> that's fair. That's totally agreed. Honestly, it's a metric where I would kill people for that. Yeah, and 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 yeah. and J Money has the right idea. Like I saw a table of like why the British started this war because I mean they started it over like gold and resources, and like they they shocking. It was a a table of like the mines output. In like in today's money, like what they were outputting at the end of the war was like eight point five billion dollars worth of gold. Wow, Jesus! So yeah. there was a shitload of money. Yeah, that they were fighting right. over. If this helps at all, currently, right now, one full ounce of gold equals one thousand nine hundred fifty dollars American. Okay, one ounce. Okay, I'll take that. So one hundred twenty years ago, it's like mm -hmm. I'll take that. Okay, yeah. So no, no, basically, long story short, no small sum of money, clearly. And I just didn't know, like, you know, was it like a mountain's worth of gold or was it, you know, something he could carry off on an oxen? Because if he rides off and he's got fucking two, three satchels full of gold, he's probably fucking set. Well, I mean, yeah, to, exactly. To KY's point, you know, there's no, because we're talking currency, there's no, again, actual metric of how much that actually was that he's walking away with. So, because it is pure gold. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he walked away with any of it. He just, from what I hear, he just put it all in the caves. Okay. And then said, come find it later. Okay. All right. Like a pirate. I respect yeah. that. I respect yeah. that. Hide it in the caves. I'm going to come back to it later. I respect that, yeah. So his uh, his wounds heal. He returns to combat. He gets into a like some battle, and his unit has to retreat into like Portuguese East Africa. And he's actually captured by the Portuguese because they're like a neutral combatant during this war. But wait, he just healed up, went back, and immediately got captured. Yeah, so he <laughs> he went back into battle, started fighting the British again. And he was like, oh shit, he got pushed back. And he got pushed back into like, you know, now what is Mozambique? But it was controlled by the Portuguese. But the Portuguese capture him. Saying, like, no, 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 man, you can't be here. This ain't cool. So he gets captured, and his whole unit gets captured. Ran random context. Portuguese was kind of on the the waning side of being a superpower in Europe at that point. So they were trying to maintain any authority they could potentially have by powering with some of the other folks in the region. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they're, they're just playing it safe, you know. And he was like, no, 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 I'm basically like a mayor here because I have a a cave full of gold somewhere off in them hills. Don't capture me because I got a cave of gold, you fucker. Yeah. Be cool about yeah, it, Yeah, just right? be cool, you motherfucker. Some. Yeah. I, I killed more Boer soldiers than you did, Portugal. Let them have it, okay? So, I mean, the Portuguese aren't okay with that. So they they capture him. <laughs> Dude. And they, they send him to Portugal to an internment camp. So my gold. <laughs> they, they send him all the way to like, like literally Portugal, like outside of Lisbon, to an internment camp as a prisoner of war. That's crazy. So s starting a war, the war, the war start, uh, con man. I mean, uh, where? I'm sorry. Uh, like modern day South Africa. Okay, so South Africa makes his way up to Mozambique to hide this gold. Goes back to the front, gets picked up by the Portuguese, and then shipped up to. Around Lisbon, yeah, totally different continent, right? 
That's yeah. crazy. I mean, you think? I mean, Mozambique is sorry. Mozambique is mid continent, right? No, it's like southeastern Africa. Southeastern Africa. Okay. So I mean, that ship ride. He had a long time to think about. Like my mother fucking gold is just sitting there. right over there. <laughs> I just can't. I just can't imagine being like my, all my money's in one spot. But obviously, it's now modern day rules. You can't just access access it anywhere. He literally has to go and pay off locals and get the gold from the cave. And he's sailing in a ship directly northward saying, I'm getting further and further away from my gold. I do, yeah, I do wonder if he was saying that to the other prisoners. I'm getting further away from my gold. Listen to me. Listen to me. I'm getting fucking further away from my gold. Oh my god, I'm sick. I'm further away from my gold. You little motherfuckers, <laughs> I'm further away from my gold. I think him and Scrooge McDuck had the same illness. They did. They did. They did. <laughs> DuckTales. woo I actually watched a video on YouTube about the best intros, and DuckTales was number two. Oh, because we, yeah, we can man. all do the DuckTales yeah. intro. That was a sick-ass, like, the gimme fucking early 90s, late 80s music, DuckTales. DuckTales. Woo-hoo. Every now and then. Yeah, they, it sticks Duck-tales. with you. You remember Woo-hoo. it. You pull it back. Danger lurks behind you. And there's a stranger out to find you. Right behind you. Oh, is it, I thought it was right behind you, out to find you. See, I'm fucked up. It's been it's been, well, it's been twenty years. It's been a week. Yeah, yeah it's been a hot minute. Everyone yeah. Disney Plus, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> can you watch? Can, can you watch DuckTales and Disney Plus? Yeah. Oh yeah, you can watch oh, all the old Disney shows. Plus. Now streaming for seven ninety nine early early subscription. No, no, we can't. We, we, can't we can't do that. Disney will fucking sue our shit. <laughs> okay, I'm it. sorry. Disney Plus. <laughs> Disney Plus. You can go and watch Nucktales. Woo! <laughs> and the Whoa. Mandalorian. It's a good show. Coming it's a back really around good show. October thirtieth. Just October thirtieth like you know. is coming out. Nandalorian. Nandalorian. Baby Noda. <laughs> yeah, we we can get away with making fake Pornhub apps. If we fucking mention anything about Disney, we're fucked. Yeah, Jeff Bezos already has fucking those drones coming over all around. Yeah, he's house, he's so. coming he's coming by our houses later on tonight. This is borrowed time anyway. Yeah, that's okay. Jeff Bezos, take me dead or take me alive, you motherfucker! I will kill you. <laughs> Jeff Bezos is going to eat all of us as lizards eat all their food, which is whole. I was going to bring up lizard people. He will absolutely eat us whole. There is no, yeah. And then he'll have to have to just sit and rest for a few days like a real anaconda. Full digestive system. Having eaten a full deer, yeah. The moment he eats Ryan, I know I've got two weeks. Mm-hmm. Then, then I know. <laughs> yeah, use me, as, use, use me as your gauge. You we'll got two weeks. Time. I appreciate that. Oh, definitely. Connor, I apologize. We got way off track. What's going on with yeah, this so he's So he's in an internment camp in Portugal. Apparently, he, quote, charms the daughter of one of the guards, and she helps him escape. Yes. Yeah. My boy Fred. Yeah. So you know Fred is, Fred, right? he's right said Fred at this point. You know what I mean? Turn me right around, right around, right around. <laughs> <laughs> My God. You, but can you imagine what his charm is? Hey, hey. Hey, ever seen a cave full of gold? Yeah, I got some Africans who are really excited about it. <laughs> Listen, Toots, I got a cave full of gold, so uh, you gonna sleep <laughs> with me? Toots. You gonna sleep with me or what? Come on. That's pretty much what my uh, my Tinder profile reads. <laughs> Listen, Toots, I got a cave full of gold. You got, I got a cave full of gold, all right? You might have a piece. <laughs> <laughs> we just, we do, I will say, we do assume his, his misogyny. Yeah. But what could be the case is, this chick could just hands down need a bad boy, and he's that sweet, partly Dutch guy. Okay, would you? Okay, uh, we assume misogyny. Would you assume anything else of this time period in this caliber? Person? I would not. Okay. In fact, I would not. I just wanted. To, I wanted to cover the spectrum okay. of maybe she. Maybe she needed that dick. Maybe you know he what? Was the dick I'm to not do gonna. It. I'm not gonna like generationally slut shame here. Like perhaps she just wanted some bad boy out of out of South Africa. Yeah, a yeah. Dutchman. Yeah. Playing his cards right with a fucking pocket full of gold somewhere. It just also happens that no one should trust anyone whose first line is, I have a cave full I of gold. I have a cave full of gold, yeah. yeah. I have fallen for that too many times. It's true. Yeah. That's right. You know Definitely. what? My biggest problem is Jafar keeps getting me with yeah, that he line. Yeah, he does. He does. He does. And he turns into a snake each time and sex. he eats you. Yeah, it's a, lot of, it's a lot of snake anal sex going on with you. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's another Disney reference. We might have to we we had a we had a cut out. <laughs> Buffar, I believe, is the Buffar the individual. Wizard. Yeah, we're it's talking fine. about. He was a buffoon. It's fine. I don't want to go in any cave of wanders. Yeah, so we got yeah we got to cut these Disney. All these Disney references we have to cut out. Yeah, we're fucked. We're gonna get fucking sued our asses off. We're Not only are we distracted from Connor's story, we are easily getting sued over the sex. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a it's a it's a similar reference to the Lion Duke. You know what I mean? Very similar. <laughs> What we have going on. He could be a kick-ass Duke. It's it fine. He's a kick-ass Duke. Oh, I just can't wait to be Duke. You know. Dude, <laughs> the Duke is going to come into play. Just you wait. <laughs> oh, shit. Here we go. I this feel like that time. was a segue this now. Time. Okay. It has been foretold. All right. So he's in Europe. And what he does is he infiltrates his way into the British army. Because he, like, escaped Portugal. He made his way to Paris. And the you know, Boer intelligence, the Boer sympathizers in Europe sent him and like found his way into the Boer army and he got commissioned as an officer in the British army. He gets sent back to South Africa as part of the British army. There, there is so much to unpack with that. Okay. That's first in, of all, first incredible. of all, I just, I gotta, I gotta mention Travel between European countries is, like, non-existent. We've done so many characters now of this time period who traveled in Europe, and clearly you could just go wherever the fuck you wanted. There was no need for any identification or or really anything. You just, if you wanted to go to Paris, that's fine. Sure. Go to Paris. That's okay. This this guy, this guy he was a double agent. Yeah. yeah. He was a double agent. Flipping sides whenever he needed to. Dude, I fucking I fucking love it. Dude, this guy, he's a classic, like we we don't know whether he's a hero or a villain yet. Yeah, it goes both ways. In our story in ongoing series, hero and villains. That's what we do. Yeah. Yeah. And this guy is he is sitting on that fence and riding it down to fucking the Cave of Wonders, the Cave of Gold. Cave of Gold. Cave of think Gold. Think of it think of it as a skateboarder who falls off and then he's just riding the rail with his balls. That's what this guy's yeah. doing right now. <laughs> his steel sack is shooting off sparks. Okay, so he infiltrates through a lot of mechanisms. The how do you infiltrate the cuz the the South African uh accent is not super close yeah, to the British not, accent. And it's not subtle. It's not subtle. Well, this yeah. is this is the the story of our guy. I mean, he's he's basically a con man. He he knows a lot of languages. He can slip into whatever situation he needs to be in. So that that does fit into the idea of being from South Africa, former South Africa. Uh, is this Rhodesia then we're talking about? So it's like it's like it's like the Dutch Transvaal or something. Okay. Okay. So it was it was it was before those things. Okay. So he's like he's a true like polyglot at that point, right? He has like he can speak probably over six languages because that's you couldn't live in that region without being able to speak that many. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, if he made his way out of Portugal, which dude, that's insane. Portuguese, right? So he speaks Dutch. Made his way, you know, unfortunately to Portugal, had to learn Portuguese, and then to get to Britain, he, I mean, he may have taken a boat, but good chance he went up through Gibraltar, which means he had to speak Spanish. Oh my gosh! Well, dude, I mean, technically, like... to get out of to get out of Portugal, all he did was eat pussy. So that's... he did. He did <laughs> that's a lot of pussy to get out of there. You don't need it's any language for work. that. That language is universal. God, I'm That's glad right. you just described a, a, a Cinemax After Dark special going on with this guy because that's what yeah. that's what he was going on. Well, with. Well, Cinemax After Dark is a little more about like eating thigh yeah, or like. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess we're getting anatomically correct over here. Come on, <laughs> it's smoother. Hey, man, there. I still got there. KY is a monster. <laughs> Cinemax After Dark will get you there if you need to. Okay, you can oh, beat yeah. off to it. It's real. Yeah, if you have to. Yeah, yeah it would. It would do the trick. If I want to change up, I'll go to Cinemax after dark and just watch some soft corn, soft porn stuff. Soft core? Soft corn? Soft corn stuff. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to talk about it Soft corn like and corn. soft corn. I want both I want both of those. Everyone needs to know you can get both of those, okay? Let's just, let's just acknowledge I fucked that joke up. Okay, let's go ahead. Whatever, dude. I've been fucking jokes up the entire night. Everybody join in. <laughs> join me. Join me. I'm going to say one thing, though, about the soft corn. If you... <laughs> 
<laughs> if you if you walked into the room and somebody was beating off to a boiled pot of corn, I would scream at the top of my fucking lungs. <laughs> I don't know why KY would scream at the top of his lungs because everyone has preferences. That's and right. that's what we support. We support that. Don't you slut shame him, all right? Shaming, stop shaming people. Don't yuck his corn yum, corn. all right? Don't yuck I'm going to walk yum. in and someone is just going full throbbing, full devil in the dick over fucking popping corn. <laughs> Come on, baby. When you when just... I put hand to meat, it's almost always just soft corn porn. <laughs> soft corn porn. <laughs> I can't. I can't. <laughs> I'm sorry, Connor. Oh, is, that, is, that, is that cream corn? Oh. Is that, cream that corn? is. That's how you get cream corn. That is, that is oh, how you get cream I'm corn. Never having cream <laughs> corn. That is how you get cream <laughs> corn. Oh, Lord. Yeah, so we're going to go on a sour note and say, you know, when he was back into South Africa, he found out that his sister had been raped and killed by the British. And his oh. mother was oh in a concentration camp dying of hunger. Wow. We go from soft corn. Yeah, that's, it's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard change. It's a hard, hard transition Back to the here. story. But that's that's the reality of the situation. That's reality. Just to be fair, when you do when you do, um, should any of our listeners take any advanced college courses on uh, imperialism, when you do study items such as forced labor camps, British are just as guilty as anyone else. Probably the most guilty. Yeah, more the most the most guilty. So I mean, this guy hates the British at this point, right? Working um, with them. So, yeah, but he, he's a double agent at this point. He's working inside the British Army to fuck them over. So he finds out this news about, about his, his sister and mother, and now he's probably plotting some amazing revenge, I'm hoping. Yes. Yes. So he, he makes some secret plans to kill this General Lord Kitchener and sabotage any power plants, naval stations, and things like that. He he rounds up, you know, some 20 other Boer soldiers who are, you know, into the cause. And he gets betrayed by one of them. And he's found out. And he gets arrested by the British. He's court-martialed. And he gets sentenced to execution by firing squad. What? Okay. 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 Yeah. So All things so considered, just, at this time period, firing squad seems pretty. You know that would that would seem humane, basically. Yeah. So the night before his execution, he cuts a deal with them to say, "Don't fucking kill me. I'll I'll translate. I'll I'll give you. I'll give up the, like the secret board codes. I'll translate anything you want to." And he basically gets his sentence reduced just to life in prison. Well, yeah, great. Life in British prison. That must have been fucking really awesome. Yeah, it's better than being shot in the face. That's true. <laughs> I don't know. All that tea would get pretty old after a while. In BBC radio, you know, it would get pretty old after a while. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he wanted to just, you know, never mind, never mind. I don't want to be alive anymore. BBC, if you're listening, I do love your programming. You are great. So his, um, all his other accomplishments, his, uh, accomplishes, accomplishes? accomplishments, all of his accomplices, oh, accomplices, get shot. Oh, geez. oh God! Okay, he, he survives. He 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 lives out his, you know, a few days in the prison, and he he doesn't give up any information really. He just gives them like fake codes. Smart as you do, as you do as a as a double agent. And he just gets imprisoned in like the Cape Town castle for a few months. That's better than Portugal. He's closer to his cave of gold. So while he's in prison there, all he has is an iron spoon, and he works his way breaking out of that castle. With an iron spoon? With an iron spoon. Why would they give him a spoon of iron? Because yeah, they didn't have plastic then. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't know how to pollute the earth the right way. Yeah. Yeah, they, don't, they honestly didn't know how to destroy the earth. That's the truth, yeah. We got that. We got yeah. that down. They now. didn't know about Our the baby age. turtles that we need to kill 
through all of our plastic. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, if we would have told the British a hundred years ago the baby turtles had gold, would they have just started? A no question, they would have up? slaughtered the species oh, that dude. would be extinct right now. You're talking about. You're talking about baby sea turtles would be the dodo at this point. <laughs> I, you know, I've always said that sea turtles are the worst of all the turtles. <laughs> oh, oh. It's down. That's strong feelings right there. Yeah, it's, it's a really polarizing uh, point of view, but I don't care. Do you, oh, wow. <laughs> Man. So this guy's in prison in a Cape Town castle with his iron spoon, and he spends the next few months just digging away at the mortar in between, like, the stone blocks, trying to escape. Digging away with his little spoon. Just loosening up all these stone blocks. My God. Can you imagine the fucking racket he's making, though, with that spoon? He, like, hits a knuckle. God damn it. What's that? No, I'm fine in here. Just stubbed a toe. It is, I'm good. Just to be Don't fair. Don't worry about it. That, to KY's point, it's it's everyone can hear it, but then that is also hell that you're doing that, too. I mean, you're engaging this in this process of digging with a spoon. You are, you hate everything about the waking hour. The only happy moments you have are when you are asleep basically <laughs> i just had a stupid thought you think all the soups they were giving him he was like <laughs> he was like really pissed off i'm laughing before the joke i'm laughing before the joke i'm sorry <laughs> like, his little spoon's getting smaller and smaller and it's full of fucking dirt he didn't have a, a fucking dirtless soup spoon the whole fucking no time, no he know? didn't he was eating the dirt yeah I love this cinder block soup I'm having. Thank you so much, Carol. Thank so you. good. Yeah, it tastes just like the, the mortar between all of these bricks in my cell. Crazy. Way to take something dark? Make a joke out of it. I like that. That's that's LKP. That's LKP. <laughs> we lighten it. We lighten it up. So, I mean, for months, he's digging away at these stones. And he loosens up enough of them to actually break out. He's got enough stones. The night finally comes. He, like, pushes all the stones out of the way. And he starts crawling out. And then there's a cave-in, and he gets knocked unconscious <laughs> while he's breaking out of the oh. castle. Oh, my God. There's a cave-in on his tunnel out of the castle. He didn't get his joists up. He got, you gotta get the joists up, you know? Yeah, I was gonna say, he didn't, he didn't do the, the, what's it called? Shoring. He, he didn't, didn't do, do the shoring. Well, he only had a spoon, so, I mean, what are you gonna do? Yeah, that is true. I'm armed with literally something that is found in every kitchen ever. And I'm trying to get out of here, so. <laughs> He's wearing the spoon on his head. This is my safety equipment. Hold strong, tiny spoon. Good thing I have the spoon. I can do whatever with it. So he, he stopped unconscious. The, gu the guards find him the next morning. <laughs> he's, un he's, un he's uninjured. He's uninjured? But since he tried to escape, the British are like, no, 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 man, we can't take a chance with you anymore. We're going to send you to Bermuda to a Pinot Connolly. Because you're never going to escape from there. Oh, my God. Yeah, there are no walls. It's just the ocean. Oh, my God. Wow. You imagine, when he, you said he was uninjured. That pride was injured, though. That pr pride, pride, yeah. No, you don't understand. You don't understand British fucking officers, redcoats. I, my pride is injured. That took a hard hit. That took a really hard yeah. hit. Yeah. Because you know they were, like, sarcastically British the whole time, being just... Oh, tried to escape, did you? Got real far, I see. Yeah, great job here. Let's send you to a fucking island now, yeah? All right, there you go. Off you go. I'll see you dig out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's of give them work. a whole box of spoons, <laughs> shall we? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh see, so you try to, try to escape, do you? Mm, not going to yeah. happen. Well, just sail away on your fucking spoon now. All right. Hate to disappoint... <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. I hate it when you guys do accents. I don't do them all. <laughs> <laughs>